So let's agree that whatever methods were used are sound, <laughs> valid. They can always be questioned. Always. You can always question the methods of the experiment. You can always say, I don't agree with your bar levels, I don't agree with autism, rates and jumps. Only by definition. So you can always question the definitions and retest if you want to test it a different way. Maybe test at different levels. Whatever. Let's go with this study right now. Okay, here we go. Zero to one hour, which I'm assuming is the time at zero. They were baseline for an hour. They were exposed to that secondhand smoke exposure. We have most lung function parameters. And these, these are all kinds of things that are measured here. Cytokines, a few other things. I think I've taken that out. I remember reading this and being confused by it. It was all lung function. Basically, how much they can expand, alveoli, uh, uh, oxygen transfer, whatever it is. Let's get the hypotheses, okay? Let's get the hypotheses. Spin that camera over here. So we're going into the study, ostensibly to see what? We're going into the study to see what, friends? Yes, if there are any, correct? Yeah. What are we going to assume, Kaylee? We're going to assume that there is going to be a fact. Boom! We're going to assume H0, in this particular case, that from zero to one hour, at initial exposure, Secondhand smoke <coughs> has no lowering effect or reducing effect. Has no, no, let's put negative. No negative effect on lung function parameters. So what you're going to assume. Because you don't want to go in assuming that it has a negative effect on lung function parameters. If you do that, you have to know where the center of that curve is. And you don't know that. And you don't know where the center of that curve is. The center of the curve you know is the baseline curve of your sampling distribution because you've measured those. You've measured these people before they were exposed to secondhand smoke. So you know what that curve looks like. Yeah, you know what that curve looks like. All right, we'll come back to that more here. We'll come back to that. So like, <coughs> what's the research hypothesis going to be in this case? Standards used as the measurement for rope testing. Why? That's the UIAA. 
But you have to understand French because they don't speak English. Fair? Okay. All right. So here is what I just came up with. Did you notice the p-value was not given? Did you notice the p-value was not given to us in this one? It just simply said that the p-value was. Can we go ahead? Less than 0 0.05. Does it matter that it didn't give us a p-value? No, Laura. It does not matter at all. Why? Because where do we know if we have a p-value? Where do we know we are if we have a p-value less than 5%? Let me ask you a better question. Let me ask you a better question. Let's draw a picture. Here is a curve representing baseline lung function. Now again, I do not know what they measured here. I don't know if it's efficiency of oxygen transfer across cells. I don't know if it's lung capacity. I have no idea what was measured. But whatever was measured has a baseline. Is that, is that okay? So whatever we define to be the definition of baseline lung function, we've defined it and we've measured it and we've said that's center. Is that fair? So this is the essential, this is, this is the null hypothesis curve. This is the sampling distribution of the null hypothesis. Baseline lung function. We can assume that moving to the right of that, what is happening to lung function? It's getting better. better. That's, a good That's a good definition. It's better. So therefore, conversely, moving to the left of it, whatever the measurement is, I don't know what the measurement is, and it's not really that important anyway, as long as it was measured concisely. Moving to the left of average, it's getting Do you think this would be a two-tailed or one-tailed interval set up on this, on this curve right here? What, what's your gut tell you? Two or one tail? That's good, we can see that. Two or one tail. If we're trying to show, everyone, always ask yourself what you're trying to show. We're trying to show secondhand smoke has negative effect. So what do you think? Two or one tail? I, hell yeah, one tail. Why? Because we're trying to show it has a negative effect, which means we're trying to show Eric that it is. Uh, I don't know. Getting worse, so I can only go one way. Again. Worse is going one way. Worse. You don't want to have a tail over here because that would imply that smoking is actually making your lungs work more efficiently. But hell, maybe that happens. Maybe we've been wrong for 100 plus years. Doesn't seem that way. It seems like all the evidence point in the other direction. So here's what we want we want a cutoff out here. We'll study that cutoff more today as we go through the, the back part of today. We want a cutoff over here. And that cutoff leaves how much area over here? That's our basis, 95%. 95% of our sampling data is going to fall. Now, some of, that, some of that sampling data is also increased lung function. It is possible, although unlikely, that you can stick somebody in a smoky room for an hour test their lung function, and they're actually better off than they were when they started. Possible. You, you, you've often heard of this. Philip Morris, the head of Philip Morris, this is going back about eight, nine, ten years, said, I smoke three packs a day and I'm a marathon runner or something along those lines. And I believe that. I believe that there is somebody out there who can smoke and improve their lung function. But what I believe way more is, for the most, for the vast majority of people, this is average without smoking. Okay, without smoking, I doubt very much they're going to increase their lung function with smoke, just by all the studies I've seen. And then I go to let people hacking their lungs up as they smoke. Okay, so here's your 5% over here. Here's your 5%. There's your 5%. Let's color code our hypotheses. Let's color, color code our hypotheses. At initial exposure, secondhand smoke, as noted, let's put initial exposure as green. Who wants to hazard a guess? as to where our data fell on that curve. Come on up here, grab the marker, and draw me an asterisk. I think you can do this. I think you can do this. Be brave. Be brave. Where did my data fall? Be brave. You'll be on camera. If you have a problem, I can turn the camera off. I don't mind. You turn it back on once the asterisk up there. Come on. I guarantee two-thirds of you know where to put the asterisk. Wake up. It's 9.20. The day has started. Don't let me call your name. I know most of your names now. Call my bluff. You know where it is. You know where it is. 
put the asterisk, you know how we've been putting asterisks all day long, we put asterisks on the curves. When the p-values are small, they get way extreme. When they're big, they get, this is a, this is a small p-value right now. It's less than 5%. Where did it land? Turn the camera off. Turn the camera off. So no pressure. Push the button, Jesse, push the button. People glued to your seats. Get up. Just the, the far button on the far far right side. There's a little push button. Oh, right, right the battery. Oh, yeah, there you go. Just push that.